All right, you ready? Okay. Beef shank comes from what primal? Um, the round. Okay. Motion muscle or sedentary muscle? Motion muscle. Heavy? Heavy motion muscle? Sure. Cooking method? Cherry? Cooking method? Cooking method. What? I know, you asked me or telling me. Did you, what did you say? I didn't hear you. Moist, right? Motion and moist. M&M's, right? M&M, motion and moist. If I don't have M&M's, if I don't have M&M's, sedentary and dry. Okay, first step is you're going to take all the outside skin and fat off, the unwanted stuff. I refer to this as the common sense trim. You can do this with flat knife. Knife technique. Now today you're going to present a tray to me with your finished product. So that means you're going to have your unusable on the tray. You're going to have your usable on the tray. And a little pullover cut. Pullover cut this is exactly what it sounds like. You get underneath the skin, make a tab, pull it over our knife and hold it down. You can't just hold it up like this, that's not a pullover cut. Pull it over, hold it down. Tilt your knife up slightly so that you're basically scraping the bottom of that skin. Okay, choke up on it, pull it over again, hold it down. This hand's not moving. Again and again. That's a pullover cut. Watch again. Underneath, pull over, slight tilt up on the knife, coming down in one motion. Notice I'm not sawing, cutting, this is a knife, not a saw. One motion, one motion, back up, one motion, okay, flat trim, flat trim, flat trim, remove, okay, you're going to go all the way around the shank taking off all that exterior. This is a common sense trim, that's all it is. You know you're not going to eat it, you know you don't want it in your stew, so let's get rid of it. Okay, so I got the fat off, now I want to go back and get the rest of the silver skin off. Pull over cut. because this, this particular muscle, this particular primal is so hard to get all the fat off of. I would say you're going to get this about 85 to 90 percent denuded. Uh, this is a lot going on with this piece. Okay, I got a lot of silver skin down here. Yeah. Quite a bit left 
last up in here. You know, it only takes a few minutes, but every movement of your knife should have a result. Otherwise, you're wasting steps. Okay, it's all unusual. Here. Now, this should not take you that long. I will keep you posted on where you should be at what point so that you stay on track. You may have to push yourself a little bit. Okay, you need to stay on track. Do not fall behind. What happens if we don't finish our timeline on time? It throws everything off, right? Dinner's not ready on time, and you lose points for not being on time. You don't want that to happen on the first day. You don't want it to ever happen. All right, so I'm pretty well cleaned up around the outside edge. I don't really need to take any more off of this right now. Okay, so what I want you to do at this point now is, again, the widest part of the bone towards you. You started to go down. I'm not sure if I mentioned that to you or not. But when you started the denuding and the cleaning, the widest part of the bone was towards you. All right, now. What you'll see here, if you, if you, if you roll the shank, so that you have all bone up here. That's your starting point. Depending on which side of the animal you have will determine whether this solid side is on the right or whether it's on the left. This particular one is on the right. And you'll see the difference. It's a, it's a much uh, larger muscle, one muscle than over here. And what you're gonna do is take the tip of your knife. Now, okay, now we're gonna debone. So you, you did some flat trimming. We did some denuding with a pullover cut. And now we're gonna debone. So when you're deboning something, you should only be using about the first inch and a half of your knife. <coughs> That's what you should be using. Okay. When you hold the knife, most people want to hold the knife like this because they think it's very secure and so on. And then you got to turn your whole arm to make that blade go straight. Not comfortable. Not as much control. All right. But let's take that knife and let's just swing the knife out. Leave our arm straight. Okay, and let's put our index finger over the blade, like so. All right, over the blade. Now, you've can, you have you've taken your middle finger and your thumb, you've grabbed the, the collar of the knife. All right, and you've got now you've got super control. You can do almost anything you want from this point. The knife has now become an extension of your arm. Okay, elbow up gets the tip down. If you're trimming, when you're trying to bone with this part of your knife. That means this part of your knife is someplace where it doesn't belong. More than likely, it'll be cutting some profit or be in your thumb or your hand or your palm. Okay, you don't want that. All right. Elbow up, tip down. Start at the very top of the solid side. Get your knife right up against the bone and begin to follow the bone down. Your hands must work in concert with each other. So as I'm cutting, I'm also pulling away the piece of meat that I'm trying to remove. Look at all that cellophane in there. All that beautiful collagen, all that beautiful flavor, it cooks down. Okay. It all cooks down nice. So go around. Now once you've got it started, you're pretty much free to turn this thing any direction you want. I just want everybody to start on the same page. I want everybody to start at the top. Okay. Don't just work in one area. A to B. Work the whole length of the bone. Work the whole length of the bone. Okay. Let's put it back together just for a minute. At the solid side. At the bottom of the solid side, there's going to be your first obstacle, which is going to be a bone growth way right down here at the bottom. Okay? This is called the hook. We call it the hook. In a few more months, some of you may have had it have developed on yours already, the shank. In a few more months, this little piece of hook that we're feeling down here would grow into a bone and it would attach itself up in here. Okay, it's called a stiffle bone. Stiffle bone. This particular one, this is going to be where you're going to say, I can't get through this, I can't get through it. 
Well, depending on how, how much growth is there, maybe it's cartilage, maybe it's already starting to develop some bump. But you can get through it, maybe you have to get up and over it. I don't know, but you're going to go through it. You have to get through it one way or another. Okay? That's required. Okay. Again, starting at the top and coming down. This one here feels a little bit good growth on this one. I'm going to start to go around it a little bit. Start to go around it. When I get it out, you'll see it. Softens up a little bit, so I can go through it now. That's it. Okay, again, right against the bone. When you're deboning, if your knife isn't touching the bone on one side or the other, you're doing something wrong. Your knife should never be in the middle of the meat, ever. Not when you're deboning. If you're making cubes or cutlets or something, that's a different story. But we're taking the meat off the bone. So that means the tip of our knife has to be right up against that bone. All the time. All the time. Once the bone is out, bring it to me. Let me get a look at it, and I'll have to tell you whether or not you need to go back to your bench and clean it some more. There it is, there's the hook. Pretty good growth here. Okay, up here it started to, started to get soft and I was able to cut through it. But down here it was pretty hard. That's gonna be your first major obstacle. You're gonna see that and you're gonna say, geez, now what am I gonna do? Well, that's okay, it's there. You're gonna get it, I guarantee it. But some of you might be here, some might be up here. The last class I had one that was connected. It's connected, pretty cool. I think it worked the way around it okay? Oh yeah, great job, great job. Okay, so this was my first job in the meat business. I was taking a knife and cleaning off all the red, off the white, just to make sure I could get a feel for the knife. That was weeks on end. Weeks on end. Okay, so the bone is out. I'm going to get a look at it. If I approve it, you're going to throw it in the middle, in the middle bin. Okay, okay our next step is to take the whole shank and we're going to go back to that solid side again and we're going to remove that solid side. We're going to find its natural seam and we're going to take that solid side right off. There's a little tab on the bottom that you're going to say, geez, does that stay on here or does it go over here? I prefer this piece. It's right here. I prefer this piece to go over here. Now, this piece, heavy piece of Achilles tendon here. Just take your knife and cut it off. Don't try and save it. If you get a little too much red on it, then go ahead and try and get some of that red off. Red is? Money. Money. Red, red is? Bread. 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 thank you. Red bread. Okay. Motion and? Motion and? Okay, so here I've just basically, I have not denuded this whole thing, I've just taken off any heavy fat that's on there. That piece is done. That'll go three pieces in a number three bag. Crack back team, three pieces in a number three bag. All right, now, back over here. This was our outside that we worked on. Pretty clean. Because the bone is out of it, I got a little bit more access to some of the stuff I couldn't get before. Get that out of there. All right. Here. Some heavy cords here. Put in here just a little bit. Gives me the opportunity to just do a little bit more house cleaning. All the time I'm doing this, I'm thinking, I can't over trim, I can't over trim, I don't want to waste money. I can't over trim. Okay. okay. If I turn it in, turn it upside down, this, you can actually see a blood vessel right here. I squeeze it out a little bit, you'll see some blood come out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's an actual blood vessel right there. That's got to come out of here, along with all this fat to get the tissue to come out. What's this piece of meat called? This is just, that's the solid side, this is just shank meat. That's all you need to know about it. shank meat. Boneless shank meat. Can I buy boneless shank meat? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, I can. So inside of this cluster right here, you have that vessel. Okay. So this is all junk, we don't want that anywhere in our food line. And I still got some carbon here. Alright, I don't really want that. That's pretty thick. All right, over here, a little bit of flat trimming. Up in here, I got some fat. Usable trim. Really, I can do anything with that other than usable trim. Pretty heavy cord there. <coughs> a little bit of meat out of that. A little bit of meat off of that. Okay, garbage. Some more silver skin. You'll be able to do some more cleaning. Like I said, once you get the bone out, and you see what you've got, you'll be able to finish your cleaning. as clean as I, can, uh, as I can get this piece right now, what we want to do. My finished product is going to be a one inch by one inch by one inch cube. That's going to be our finished product. So I'm going to cut this. If you don't have a ruler, I suggest you get one or borrow one from somebody. Now if you see, I got these two pieces here that are just kind of hanging on. Do I want to get rid of them? I don't want to get rid of them, but I want to just move them over. So I can go back to them because they're just kind of in the way right now. This piece over here, same thing. Seam it off, put it off to the side. Right. Now I got this beautiful piece of shank meat that I'm going to make into one inch cubes. Well, there's a process. First step of the process is going to be to even <coughs> the wall a little bit. Just get yourself, without being wasteful, just cut yourself a nice clean edge. Nice straight edge. Now I want you to measure over one inch and cut straight down, straight through. Okay. Measure over one inch, straight down, straight through. One inch. comfortable for you. The result are, is one inch strips. How you get there, I can leave it up to you. I can guide you on how I would get there, which is what I'm doing right now. But if you need to turn it a little bit, whatever, that's what you do. And now this one here, just a little bit wide on that one end. These pieces that I took off before, you know what, they're doable. We can clean that up a little bit. Get myself a nice straight wall again. Cut an inch. Cut an inch. You gotta be somewhat creative, okay? You gotta remember that today it's my money. It's my budget. Next time it might be your budget. Okay? So, you're gonna learn how to respect. Now, one of the things that I was taught <coughs> stuck with me forever to this day. You treat every piece of meat like it's the last one that you own. Don't get that false feeling of security where you say, well, I got 15 more in the cooler. What's a big deal if I throw one extra away this time? Because that ends up being a little bit more and a little bit more. And you end up falling into a really bad habit of being very wasteful. So if you're looking at this piece of meat like it's the last one you own, you'll always maximize the utilization your mindset you should have. Alright, so I've cut my one inch strips. Get a nice piece here to work. I've cut
cut all these one inch strips from everything that I had to work with. So I'm an inch high, I'm definitely more than an inch wide, and I know that I'm more than an inch long. So now my next step is again now to straighten this out. And you notice I'm not taking a lot off just to get a straight wall, I'm just taking off the minimal that I need to make a straight wall. Now I'm going to come over again an inch and make my cut. And then I'm going to go, see now I don't have enough to make two, but I have enough to make one. Put that off. Okay, this becomes usable trim. There's another one inch trim. I'll go right down the line and I'll do all of these the same way. Pick a side that you want to work with. Don't sit down and flop this thing over 47 different directions, okay? Pick a side, work with it. Okay. Don't be wasteful because I'll be looking at that. One inch. You got the knife. You control what happens. This piece here, now, if you look at this, you say, geez, what am I going to do with that? Well, you look at this as usable trim. I look at this as cutting it off here, here. That is being a couple cubes up. Or some of you might look at it and say, yeah, it's too small, you can't do anything with it. But yeah, I can. Right? Okay, and again. And again. You get my drift here, you understand how to do this? Okay, sure, sure. Now, finished product. So I cut my knife and strip both ways. My finished product is going to be very simple. I square off my one end so I have a nice, even, again, even squares to work with. I'm going to come down and measure an inch. Measure an inch. Now, I know what an inch looks like. You guys need a rule. going to do is you're going to take that cube and you're going to put it in front of you. Okay. I'm going to make everything I do look like that. So how do I do that? Well, let me take my piece, put it on here. I know i got to square it off without being too wasteful. Then I'm going to set it right up against my model and I'm going to cut. Push it off to the side. And I'm going to cut. And then I'm going to cut. I'm cutting every single one to the same piece. So, and I got a nice one inch cube. All right. So, if I give you this piece to bring back to your bench and you put it in front of you and you use it for a model, there really should be no reason why you should bring me a cube that looks like that. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. It's pretty simple, isn't it? I call this being idiot proof. Excuse me for being harsh.